Welcome back. We're talking about some of the problems plaguing the largest country in South America, Brazil. Still with us to discuss in studio, Paulo Sotero, director of the Brazil Institute of the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars, from Rio de Janeiro, Bernardo Sorge is a professor at the University of Sao Paulo, and from Sao Paulo, Daniel Bramati is a reporter for Estrado de Sao Paulo newspaper. Welcome to all of you again. Paulo, I want to ask you about Dilma Rousseff's future. Uh, you know, we talked about the fact that a lot of people are calling for her to be impeached. They want her to resign. They want her to step down. There was a recent poll that was carried out by Data Folha, which is a Brazilian research company, which showed that support for impeachment comes from the poorest sections of Brazil. And that is very striking because those were the main beneficiaries of the policies that uh, started with Cardozo with economic stability but were deepened by Lula with policies to give incentive to economic distribution, to economic uh, uh, equality, uh, social programs that were uh, quite successful and uh, helped to put maybe 35, 40 million Brazilians into the middle class. These people feel left down. Left down. Uh, there is also another indication from other polls, for instance, who, the rejection of Dilma Rousseff among women that voted for her just past November is overwhelming. People uh, thought that they have a champion and all of a sudden that they see that the dream is kind of betrayed. People are perplexed. The president, the former president Cardozo himself, who was, uh, has been very refrained in his analysis and has basically countered some leaders of his own party in terms of uh, impeachment of presidents, saying that she is an honorable woman and we need to have, along the lines of what Bernardo was saying, we need to have a concrete cause to impeach. This is not a philosophical uh, belief. Uh, president, this, this afternoon, has said that uh, in view of her loss of legitimacy, there are two options for uh, President Rousseff. One is to basically uh, level with the Brazilian people and admit that she made mistakes, and so let's start a dialogue based on that. Uh, the alternative would be, the President who, uh, Cardozo suggests, for her to resign because he doesn't see how, in the absence of a new opening from Rousseff to right. society, she would recover the necessary legitimacy to govern. Daniel, how did this President's fortunes change so click quickly? She was elected not so long ago, uh, you know, albeit by a small margin, but still she was democratically elected President. Um, yes, yes. Uh, she was uh, elected uh, by a very narrow margin. It was a very polarizing campaign. And what happened, uh, what happened uh, just after that is that uh, she, was, she wasn't able to keep her promises in the, the economic policies. She chose an, an, a finance minister who is uh, an orthodox and, and conservative economist and that was seen by her constituency, constituency as that it was seen by, like a, a betrayal uh, and, and a turnaround in, in, in the, the government. And we have, uh, uh, we, 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 we see this, this uh, the, the, the vast majority of the poor people right now want to impeach the, the, the president, but the people who, who are going to the streets uh, they are not poor, they are not young. You, you, you have, uh, at least here in Sao Paulo, we have a, a, a poll uh, from a uh, poster firm, uh, Datafolia, that shows that the more than, than 40 or, or percent of the, the, the protesters, uh, they have uh, more than 51 uh, years of age. So this is interesting. Bernardo, you wanted to say something about uh, Joma Rousseff and her Yes, I, I, I would like to... Yes, thank you. I, I would like to qualify. Uh, in fact, uh, President Dilma was elected on a political discourse saying that the situation wasn't bad, as the opposition was saying, was promising solutions, policy solutions, and all of that was unrealistic, as proved to be unrealistic. She needed to bring a, a, a minister of uh, that it is really rather from the conservative 
uh, but it wasn't a political decision, and it's not that the people disagree with the ideology. In fact, the people in Brazil don't vote for ideological reasons. They vote according to their interests. And insofar as President Dilma was spending a lot, was creating a situation was was basically unrealistic, and the people realized that what she said wasn't right, that she needed to have a more austere policy, uh, people very rapidly, because they are not ideologically oriented in general in Brazil, they feel an inflation that is very high, interest rates are very high, unemployment is increasing, and this is basically the bottom line of the story. It's in fact, as uh, my, the previous commentator said, there are different social groups in Brazil that disagree with President Dilma because of different reasons. But at this moment, there is a convergence of different social strata that are very unhappy with the situation. And they ask for impeachment, which I agree, and I understand that Paulo also mentioned that, is need to be done, if at all, under strong juridical basis. What President Cardozo proposed is her to renounce, is her decision. It's not a political decision that is, if it's taken, should be based on strong juridical basis. Paula, how significant is the fact that, you know, as Daniel just pointed out to us, that the profile of the protesters we saw this past Sunday is very different from that, say, of the protesters we saw, what, two years ago during the Confederations Cup protests yes. over public transport? Those are young people organized. They use social media to organize, etc. Mm -hmm. Now, as Daniel points out, we're seeing older demonstrators, middle class, they're unhappy as well. Well, I think that demonstration of 13 was a cry for participation. I think you had the younger people uh, trying to get in. That was very positive in that sense. Actually, those demonstrations had important consequences. One of them, uh, the government was caught by complete surprise and reacted by uh, saying that they are really going to go after corruption. And as a consequence, Congress in Brazil adopted a very important legislation allowing for plea bargain. Plea bargain has become a very important element of the series of investigations called the car wash operation on right. Petrobras that has already resulted in uh, the arrest and a guilty verdicts of, against very, very important people in Brazil. So this is the positive side of the story. This is the, the side of the story about ending impunity of people in high places that commit crimes against the common good, the public good in Brazil. This is the positive side, and that's not going to end. It's not going to change direction. What is perplexing to people is that the political body in Brazil uh, has uh, not been capable of negotiating compromises, and Brazilians are very good traditionally mm -hmm. about this, uh, that would lead to a solution. Again, to cite President Fernando Henrique Cardoso, an accomplished sociologist, uh, who said that, you know, in a moment that we need, it, we need greatness, what we have is political squalor. So it's, uh, it's not only the parties aligned yeah. to President Dilma Rousseff that are uh, of poor quality, politicians of no vision. Actually, 50 of them are now under criminal investigation under the Petrobras scandal. But even in the opposition, right. even in President Cardozo party, you will find, you know, a, a much less than desirable in terms of thinking about yeah. this, the country thinking in terms of greatness in this moment of crisis. Okay, Daniel, I've just got a few seconds left. There's one issue I want you to address, and that is we're hearing this sentiment from certain sectors of the protesters saying that it's time for the military to intervene. And we know that Brazil has had a very, very bad history with this. I mean, its recent history tells us what a, we know what happened when the military intervened. Could that happen? I, I don't think so. Uh, I'm certain that it, this is not a possibility. It's so sad uh, to see people uh, urging uh, for a military coup or a military intervention. But uh, you, 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 
it's it's a, a very uh, it's a niche in the the protesters. It's it's not the majority, of course. Right. And uh, this is not on the map, on the political map. Okay, Paulo, you want to say something? I got yeah, 15 seconds. On this very important yeah. topic, uh, the military in Brazil are very smart. They were the first to refuse this. The military are very happy to be under civilian control. It's time for the civilians to show greatness okay. for the country. And that's